So, so that's uh, uh, how far we are going to go today in this part. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about general finite difference operators because uh, uh, in the project we need to deal with also other differential operators. So the way to derive general differential operators in arbitrary grid, no matter if your grid is regular, two-dimensional, or it's a twisted or, 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 uh, or swept, is doing Taylor series analysis. I mean, you, do ta you use Taylor series analysis basically for everything, okay? And uh, uh, in 2D, you use two-dimensional Taylor series analysis, right? So, so let's, let's imagine Let's imagine I have a grid like that, right? So I have my, so I have my delta x here, okay? Uh, let me just call it delta x odd because it's the increasing x when I step in the i direction. I also have a delta x j and uh, delta y j. So uh, let's imagine the i direction is exactly aligned with x, so there is no delta x a delta y i okay so if i use if this is u of i j if this is the i j grid point i know the value at the i j grid point now this is u i plus one j this is u i j plus one and this is u i plus one j uh, j plus one for example right so i have a uh, uh, the value at every grid point. That's how finite difference works, right? In 2D, we also store the value at these grid points, at the discrete points, where uh, for regular mesh, the points are where these mesh lines intersect, okay? And I want to approximate, for example, a certain derivative. How do you do that? You combine two things, Taylor series analysis and uh, solve a small matrix. How does that work? It works by having, for example, ui plus 1, j, would be equal to ui, j. So that's the first term in the Taylor series. And the second term in the Taylor series is delta x i, right, times partial u, partial x. Second term in the delta Taylor series, delta uh, square over 2, uh, second derivative, etc. You can keep going forever. Now, u of i, j plus 1, you need uh, a little bit uh, more terms in the Taylor series because I also have delta x j, also delta y j times the y derivative of u, right? Okay, and then on the second order derivative term, you have delta x j over two square, the second order derivative of x. You also have delta yj square, uh, second order derivative with respect to y, but you also have the cross term, uh, delta xj, delta yj, uh, the mixed derivative xy, right? And then also you can keep going forever. And this works uh, even if, well, uh, if if for example, if the horizontal lines are not exactly aligned with the x-axis, then you need to do the same thing for ui plus 1j. It will also be like that. And then what's next? What's next is if you want to approximate a certain derivative, for example, let's imagine you want to approximate partial u, partial y. How do you do that? How do you do that? is you try to perform a linear combination of different grid points to cancel as much terms, as many terms as possible and leave the term on this particular coefficient to be one, okay? Right, so, so the trick, for example, I'm gonna just derive a very, uh, a very simple but not so good finite difference operator for that equation because I, I, I will be only working with three points. If you work with more points, you are going to see you have more degree of freedom and you can, you can work on more, you, you can have a better scheme. So I want to say, I want to approximate uh, this particular derivative by A, which is unknown, plus B times uij plus 1, plus C times uij, okay? 
And in order for me to approximate this derivative, I want the difference between the final difference operator and the partial u, partial y to be as small as possible. To achieve this, I want to cancel, I want to use, I want to select the values of a, b, and c to cancel as many terms, especially the terms with a small exponent on delta x and delta y. So how do I do that? I'm going to uh, perform a combination, right? I'm going to have uh, a times, which I'm just going to copy here, uij plus delta xi partial u partial x plus, I'm just going to write over here, partial square u partial x square, right? Plus b times uij plus delta xj, the same thing, same derivative, but I also have this. Uh, then I also have uh, delta xj square, etc. right? And uh, plus c times uh, just a uij. And then minus, minus partial u partial y. So I have three terms a, b, c to play with. And I want, uh, I want to cancel as many terms as possible. And it turns out with these only three numbers, I can only cancel this term. I can cancel this term. And I can cancel this term, right? All the other terms I have no control with. If you have more points, for example, if you involve u of i minus 1j, u of i j minus 1, then you have maybe e and f. And then with e and f, you can cancel other terms. So you make a more accurate scheme. But here, the, all I can do is, if I want to cancel the first term, I have to have a plus b plus c equal to 0. So this term would cancel. And then I would have a times delta xi plus b times delta xj would be equal to 0. So that this term would cancel. And then I have to have b times delta yj actually has to equal to 1, right? So that I can cancel this term. So we get three equations, three unknowns. I mean, for this one, you can do back substitution. You can figure out b first, and then a, and then c. But in general, you just uh, put that equation into MATLAB and backslash it. OK, that's, uh, that's how you derive uh, schemes. This also happens for boundary conditions, right? If you have a boundary condition, you don't know how to discretize it, uh, you do exactly the same thing. For boundary conditions, you have more constraints. You can't just use arbitrary points because some of the points are outside the boundary. So you shift what you can use into inside of the domain. That's also sometimes how you figure out how to derive the scheme for the corner points. I mean, sometimes um, in a lot of cases, it's not important. Sometimes it is actually important. So you also uh, do the same thing for the corner points.